It's the award-winning radio program. Relax and enjoy. And now your host. Hi all, welcome to the segment of A Voice in the Desert titled Manna from Heaven. In this segment, we will share with you some short nuggets of the Word of God. This segment is done with the purpose that you might have a time with the Word of God for those brief moments when you need to hear from God or you just need some rest time in the Lord. Different from our regular podcast that goes more in detail into the Word of God, segments from Manna are brief and intended to expand your knowledge of God, increasing your intimacy with His Word. We pray that it is edifying to your walk with Jesus Christ. And now we leave you with our message of the day. Hi folks, welcome to A Voice in the Desert. Uh, Today's going to be an awesome day. We have a great word for you to share with you today. And I want to thank the Lord to give us, for giving us another opportunity to be able to share the word with you, to be able to enlighten you and open up your eyes and drop those scales from your eyes so you may see that the reality of Jesus Christ and his kingdom. Uh, Today's title of today's message is called The Radical Cost of Following Jesus Christ. Okay, and some of it is going to be based on scripture, Luke 95, 56 through 62. So I want you to jot that down. So after you hear the message, you can go ahead and follow it up and verify with what is said today uh, with the actual word of God. Okay. And the word of God reads, And they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, The foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And he said to another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, permit me first to go bury my father. But he said to him, Allow the dead to bury their own dead but as for you go and proclaim every where the kingdom of God another also said I will follow you Lord but first permit me to say goodbye to those at home but Jesus said to him no one after putting his hand to the plow and looking back is fit to the kingdom of God you know Here we've heard a lot of things and we're going to say, well, why? Well, my father died. Why can't I go ahead and bury him? Well, easy. Jesus Christ is saying, let the dead bury the dead. Why? Because those that are living and are not in Christ and do not believe the message of the Messiah are already dead. So that's why God says, let the dead bury the dead. You go ahead and proclaim the word of the Messiah, the word of God. So it's it's true. You're alive, but you're dead. Without Christ, we are totally dead. He also says to the other one, but first let me go ahead and um, go say goodbye to my family, which is typical. Anybody would say, hey, listen, I'm going to go away and uh, I don't know when I'm going to see you again and say your goodbyes. But God told them in his infinite wisdom, he who puts his hands on the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Why? Because once you put your hands to the plow, the plow has to follow a straight line in order to be able to do the planting of the harvest or the planting of the seeds, whatever the case may be. If you put your hands to the plow and you look back, you will not make a straight line, meaning you will not be following what God has proposed and outlined for your life, for your mission, for your purpose. So you will be out of alignment with Christ. You know, our father is very, very smart, very infinite. That's why he's our God. God is always doing more than we know. 
in every event of our lives and in the life of this church and this town and this island and this country and this world, God is doing 10,000 things that we do not know. The designs and effects of every event from the fall of a bird or the birth of a baby or the death of a loved one or the capturing of a terrorist or the mass shooting at a church at a house of God. The designs and effects of every event are 10,000 times more than we know. 99.9% of God's specific purposes are hidden from our eyes. When we when he scattered the nations at the Tower of Babel, as he was doing more than one, he was doing more than one thing when he scattered the town of the people in Babel. It's very interesting. You have to go read it. Um, he was restraining evil by preserving diversity that would function as check and balance in the human cravings for power, fame, and wealth. But in the same act of judgment, he was preserving and increasing the diversity that would become the many colored mosaics of redemption. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Evil would be deflected by diversity in language and culture and the glory of Christ would be reflected by the diversity in language and culture. Let the peoples praise you. Oh God, let all the peoples praise you. Psalms 67.3 All the languages, all the cultures, all the colors, let them all praise you for you will shine all the more brightly in our eyes when we see you reflected and praised by all the peoples. God is doing more in these days than anyone knows for the sake of the nations of his people. His authority and his love and his mission are having tremendous effect. All effect in heaven and on earth has been given to me, says the Father. And now he says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you to the end of the age. You'll find that in Matthew 28, 18 through verse 20. All authority is mine. Go make disciples. I will be with you. That banner is flying over us. And there are untold thousands of effects being unleashed. In a few moments right now, when I'm finished speaking, you know, I'm going to ask you to reflect on how you are serving in Christ's mission are you doing what God has called you to do remember about God's calling on your life and missions the harvest is plentiful Jesus said but the laborers are few therefore beseech the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into the harvest but he said to his disciples the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. That is you and me. And I'm going to resume this in a very small sentence. It is your duty. It is my duty as citizens of the kingdom of Jesus Christ to go out into that world and speak the word of God and those that are lost and do not know him that we are to speak the word of God and bring them into the house of the Lord so that way that they are not eternally lost in the damnation of fire and hell which was made only for Satan not for God's creation man so it's very important that we do that we have been doing that and God is stirring in many hearts. I will tell you ahead of time that those who are already missionaries and are doing their job under those appointments, go ahead and do what you have to do. 
And that's God's call on your life. Whether sooner or later, some of us are going to be called to the mission field. Whether it be locally or abroad. Be ready, for Christ will always be with you. Okay? Uh, usually in recent weeks or months, you know, loosing you from your present situation to seriously consider going across a cross, a culture for the glory of Christ. You're not sure yet, but you have sensed and you will sense today something unusually strong, a strong desire or a pointer to cross-cultural missions or local missions which are much needed within the places that we live in. God is always doing more things in everything he does. So let's take a look, take a look at Luke 9, 56 through 62. To see what Jesus is doing in this unusual and shocking series of encounters. We saw what he did with the three candidates for discipleship. I will follow you, Lord, but first permit me to say goodbye. To this, Jesus responded, no one putting his hand on the plow and looking back is fit to the kingdom. More than one thing is happening here on each of these encounters. To see clearly the way Jesus intends, you need to go back to verse 51 to make sure that you feel the tension in the air. In verse 51, it says, When the days we were approaching for, the, for his ascension, he determined, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. Now, when he set his face to look at Jerusalem, we know that Jeru what Jerusalem meant for Jesus. He said to the apostles in Luke 18, 31 through 3, We are going up to Jerusalem, and in everything that is written about the Son of Man by the prophets will be accomplished, for he will be delivered over to the Gentiles and will be mocked and shamefully treated and spit upon. And then when he got to the city, in Luke 19, 41 through 42, says, When he drew near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, If you had known in this day, even you, the things which make peace for you, but now they have been hidden from your eyes. Jesus was crying because here is the Lord and Savior, and they have not recognized them. And he's also weeping because he knows when he goes down to Jerusalem, he will pay the ultimate price that anybody and only he can pay, which is the carrying of the sins of the world upon his life. So I want to thank you, Jesus, for always looking out for our well-being. Why was he in pain and weeping over that town? So there is an ominous ring in Luke 9.51 that we need to hear when Jesus says he set his face to go to Jerusalem. Then to make clear the implications of going to Jerusalem, Luke tells us what happens, what happened the next and why. In verse 52, Jesus sent messengers ahead of him. So he went and entered a village of the Samaritans to make preparations for him but the people did not receive him because he was going to Jerusalem this is a signal to us if you join Jesus on the way to Jerusalem you may not have a place to stay you will not be popular you will not be understood you will be mocked you will be shunned and thrown away you may be rejected, and only you will know what your Jerusalem is and where you're going to serve. Now, we are ready to see more clearly what is happening in our text, verses 56 and 62. Three times we read the word follow to describe what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. Verse 57, I will follow you. Verse 59, follow me. Verse 61, I will follow you. 
the point of this phrase is that being a disciple of Jesus, that is being a Christian, is more than learning about him. It includes following him wherever he goes. Whoever does not bear his own cross and, can, uh, and comes after me cannot, cannot be my disciple. Let me read that again. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. You'll find that in Luke 14, 27. If we want to help others, we must carry the cross of Christ. Show me your scars and I will show you a warrior of the kingdom of Christ. Now, we are ready to see more than one thing is going on here. When Jesus says, follow me, and says in the next context of going to Jerusalem and having been rejected in Samaria for going to Jerusalem, he is clearly saying two things, not just one thing. He is saying, follow me. And he is saying, follow me. This is me. And there is my mission. There is a people and there is a path. There is a sweetness and there is a suffering. There is a Jesus and there is a Jerusalem for you. Wherever you may go and your mission be. This is the way missions have always been and always will be. When Jesus said at the end of his life, go and make disciples of all nations. He wrapped that mission and that path and that suffering and that Jerusalem in his mighty merciful self. First he said all authority in heaven and on earth is mine. And last he said I will be with you till the end of the age. This is the follow me. Go. And there is the follow me. I will be with you. There is the path to the nations through the Jerusalem. And there is the person who will be with you, Jesus. So when he hears the word, follow me, hear two things at least, not just one thing. Not what Jesus is doing in responding the way he did to these three would-be followers. No place to lay your head. Let the dead bury their dead. Put your hand on the plow and don't look back. What he was doing, he was teaching and he was testing. He was teaching that the Calvary road through Jerusalem will be a very hard road and will require sacrifices of home, family, and especially to self. And he was testing to see if he himself was the greatest treasure of their lives. They said, I will follow you. And Jesus says, really? You love me? You treasure me that much? Here's what it will cost you. So he is testing how much they treasure the you and the I follow you by telling them what the follow will cost them. There is no hidden agenda in Christ. So there are two things going then and now in this room and town. First, Jesus is offering himself for our fellowship and friendship and partnership and missions. Just think of it. The creator of the universe, the king of kings, lords of lords, the one who upholds all things by the word of his power, the one who is everlasting to everlasting, born of a virgin, as the Holy One of God, perfect in life, triumphant over sin and death and hell, and all demons you will ever meet, in Him are hid all treasures of wisdom and knowledge and love. This Jesus says to you, as you ponder the possibility of missions, meaning follow me, not you go there while I stay in Bethlehem, but I am going there. Follow me. I will be with you to the close of the age. I will never leave you or forsake you. The promise of I will never leave you or forsake you. And be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. This you will find in Deuteronomy 31.6. Your hurt and your scars are the things that would help 
other people open their eyes to who Christ really is. Don't cave into the fear that you are feeling because that is the reason that you and I are here today. To follow Christ, do his mission in helping his people and bring those that don't believe in him, bring them into the light of Christ. You start imitating Christ, you will notice the Bible come alive before your very eyes and how wonderful it is. All we can offer Christ is our weakness, and in that weakness we will see the awesome power of Christ at work. Remember, we want the church that is on Monday is the church that is on Sunday. Deuteronomy 31, 6 was written to encourage the people of Israel, including Joshua, Solomon, and Hezekiah's military officers. Their Old Testament really presented their lives with unsurmountable challenges, and God wanted them to know unequivocally that they could trust them to lead them to victory. Imagine to have follow Moses. Joshua was called to lead the Israelites into the promised land. Moses had been guiding them towards for 40 years. No pressure, Joshua had witnessed the flaws of his mentor. Surely he harbored doubts about his home. But God assured him in Joshua 1.5, no one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. It was a call to obedience amidst great adversity. Two verses later, God repeated, The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you and never forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. When we promise always and never, we as humans are un incapable of hold upholding them. Thus the infamous saying, Never say never. However, when God promises always or never, he can be fully trusted to honor his word. Numbers 23, 19. If thus thrown back upon your own soul alone, all alone in the midnight, in the bush, in the very embrace of death itself, you have a friend that will not fail you at no time. He will guide you through every single step until your very last breath. Amen. Oh, Hallelujah. What a wonderful word. Then the second thing that Jesus is doing in our Bibles is to test you, to see if this is enough, to see if he is really your treasure, your joy, your security, your hope, your friends in time of loneliness, your home, your father, your mother, your power, to look straight ahead, to test you in all these ways, he tells you what it will cost. Don't make these hard words more difficult than they are. He is not saying there will never be when you will have a bed and a pillow and a roof. He is not saying it will always be wrong to be at your parents' funeral. He is not saying that the battle with fear that you might have made mistakes in going to the mission field will make you unfit for future service. No, never. Understand these hard sayings the way you understand Jesus. Words to the rich young ruler in his words to Zacchaeus, to the rich young ruler, Jesus says, it is going to cost you all your possessions to follow me. Sell what you possess and give to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven. Come and follow me. You will read that in Matthew 19, 21. But when Jesus came into the house of Zacchaeus, a little tax collector, the Lord Lord, the half, not a hundred of my goods, I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus responded with joy. Today, salvation has come to this house. 
Read Luke 19, 18 through 9. In other words, the point of all these tough words as Jesus interacts with different people is not to create laws that all disciples and all missionaries have to keep. Thou shalt give all your money. Thou shalt give half your money. Thou shalt go without a bed. Thou shalt go without a funeral for your dad. The point is that Jesus know everyone's idol. Jesus know perfectly what is competing in your heart with affection for him he looks for every one of us in the face this morning and sees right to our heart let him do for you now do not take offense he does this to win us for himself follow me is the goal being with Jesus is the goal it won't be easy but it will be good but there will be joy if there is continual sorrow, 2 Corinthians 6.10, sorrowful but always rejoicing because he will be with us. So he raises in the issue in verse 58 about your attachment to your home. The son of a man has no place to lay his head. Will you follow him? What about your home, your furniture, the security you enjoy, the comforts in the climate-controlled, year-round perfect atmosphere, your roach-free, house-free, mouse-free, ant-free, totally automatic kitchen, your surround sound home system center? Jesus says, follow me. I am more precious to satisfy than these. He raises the question about our family in verse 60. Let the dead bury their dead. But as for you, go and proclaim everywhere the kingdom of God. Whom do you cherish more, spiritually dead relatives or the giver of life, Jesus Christ? The point is not that it's never right for a missionary to come home for dad's funeral. The point is that it may not be right not to and the issue is how it serves the proclamation of the gospel and how it reveals your treasure who is first Christ or family Christ is first the point here is that Jesus Christ is absolute and all other allegiances are relative there will be hundreds of choices you must make admissions. Indeed in life that have no simple biblical command to settle the issue. The issue will be, do you want Christ ab above all? Or do you want to follow him more than anything? But there is a danger in indecisive discipleship. And he raises the questions in verse 62 about fickle following. The danger of indecisive discipleship. No one, after putting his hand on the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. You can't plow a straight furrow while looking back. You can't serve Christ. That is, you can make Christ look great if you're always second-guessing the value of following him. Looking back means longing back. I repeat, looking back means longing back. It means that we are not really sure he is worth following, especially to Jerusalem. Divided hearts that are not useful in displaying the worth of Christ. Jesus is worthy, but I want to close by saying he is worthy. He is worth everything, even though Jerusalem to the cross and to the nations. Yes, he will die in Jerusalem, but that is not the bad news, not anymore. That is our life. He loved us, gave himself for us. He didn't say, follow me to Jerusalem because he needed help with us in redeeming work, but because if you are with him, you will be saved. Not only will you be saved, you will be given a mission according to verse 60 is more precious than burying your father namely go and proclaim everywhere the kingdom of God in Christ Jesus
If God is moving you to consider the possibility of missions in your future, both locally or abroad, know this. He is faithfully. He is worthy. He is worthy of all our praise and of all our attention to him. Follow him will always mean more than one thing. If it means for you the place of suffering and loneliness, he will be there. Follow me means there is a path and there is a person and there is the suffering and there is the sweetness. There is the Jerusalem and there is Jesus. Follow him. My name is Caesar, and I am a voice in the desert. God bless you. Thank you for listening to today's episode. Guys, you can also follow us on Twitter, okay? And our handle on Twitter is A the Desert. That's where you're going to find the voice in the desert at the handle A the Desert. Okay, so follow us there so you can uh, get our tweets throughout the day and uh, some encouraging messages. You can also listen to our podcast uh, in iHeartRadio. All you have to do is search for A Voice in the Desert uh, and like us there and put us down as your favorite. And you can listen to us on your daily commute as you're going back and forth in your car uh, and listen to us in, as, uh, at your leisure or at your home. Okay? If you think that was enough, we got another surprise. You can find us at iTunes, okay? On Podcast iTunes. Just search for A Voice in the Desert, and you're going to find us right there. And all you have to do is subscribe to it. And anytime a new podcast is out, uh, it will automatically be downloaded onto your device, okay? You can also follow us at Stitcher Radio. All you have to do is uh, search for A Voice in the Desert. You're going to find us, follow us, and you'll be able to listen to us at your leisure. Okay, and uh, but always uh, your first recourse should be a www.avoiceinthedesert.net. There you will have all our archive, latest message, latest messages, and also uh, downloaded uh, materials that uh, we provide for you for your learning experience. Okay, once again, thank you for listening to us. God bless you, and uh, can't wait to give you our next message on next week. Okay, take care. Bye. Tell your friends and family about us. Please follow us on Facebook and subscribe via iTunes.